Greetings Highlanders fans and welcome once again to GoHighlanders.com's coverage of the 2012 UC Riverside men's soccer season. Less than one week to go before the team's first match, so we sat down with head coach Junior Gonzalez to get his take on the upcoming season. Coach, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Oh, thank you. Before we look ahead to 2012, we always take a look back at the year prior, and 2011 was certainly a big year for UC Riverside men's soccer. Saw the Highlanders set a Division I era record for wins, make their first ever appearance in the Big West Conference Tournament. What were your expectations heading into last season? And then looking back, how did the year play out based on those expectations? Well, I think uh, we had a very good spring season building up to last year's fall. And uh, we had a, a veteran group, some very key senior players that were leaders on the, on the field. So we knew we were going to compete. Uh, our goal was to get into the, into the conference tournament. So if we could be top four in conference and, and with the winning record, we knew that was going to be a success for us. And that's kind of where we uh, set our expectations on the, on the season. With three wins against ranked opponents a year ago, Highlanders fans naturally thought that the team deserved an at-large NCAA tournament bid. That didn't happen, and based on RPI rankings, we were probably one of the last teams not selected to the NCAA tournament. Somebody has to be that team, but what do you think the returners took away from the experience of last year, having gotten to the conference tournament and now looking at a possible NCAA tournament berth in the future? I think, uh, you know, our RPI spoke for itself, and us, our conference being so high with the RPI was... Uh, it was a shame that we didn't get that berth, considering we're one and two throughout the year for, as a conference. Um, but you know, I think uh, you know, in order to get in anywhere, you got to knock on the door first. And I felt like last year was uh, uh, our year where we had made some noise nationally. And you know, not making it, you know, it was a disappointment at first. But I think it was out of anger and just uh, and just the guys want to to get to that point. And that's been a goal for our program. Uh, I think they approached the spring season with uh, more motivation. Uh, I think they're a lot more disciplined. They realize that it's not easy to win, and that there's a lot of hard work and determination to get to that point. And uh, you can see it in their preparation for this fall. They've been very focused and detailed and on, this, on the small details. So. Well, as is the case every year, not everybody returns to the fold, and we lost a number of key contributors due to graduation. Three goalkeepers in Nick Goldreich, Cody Soupe and Alex Abelson, defender Aziz Atanda, midfielders Joel Garcia and Alfonso Ayala, and then the team's leading scorer, who turned pro this past year, Cesar Diaz Pizarro. That's quite a bit to replace. Before we talk about replacing them, though, what did that group mean to the team's success a year ago? Well, you know, that team uh, had been here in some of the seasons prior where we really had to grind it out and had to deal with some adversity. And I think that gave them a lot of character, and them having lead, led some of the freshmen that came in last fall. Um, I think they did a good job of bringing the team together, getting good chemistry, and, and, and helping them understand what it's like to, to ha expect success and expect wins uh, in every single match. So I, it's a big, it was a, it was a very important uh, year for us, and I think they did a good job of serving that uh, the younger classmen and teaching them a bit of, a, of how to prepare uh, for the season. All right, well, let's look to this season. Uh, let's talk first about how you replace the contributions of those uh, of those missing players. Start for the back, move forward. Goalkeepers, Goldreich and Soupe were your primary keepers over the past two to three years. Who do you have on the squad that can take their place this year? Well, last year we were, it was good because we had Colt Reichel that was uh, redshirting and was able to train under the, all those three seniors and uh, got some good experience and did a really good job of taking a hold of that position in the spring really didn't have anyone else uh, uh, competing with him. So he got all the games in the spring, non-traditional season, which gave him uh, the ability to have some experience going into into this fall. Uh, and then we got Oshkan Kosravi, which is, uh, he was uh, the academy, U.S. Developmental Academy uh, Keeper of the Year in his region. And um, he's very solid out of Dallas, Texas, that we feel is gonna compete with our, our uh, roster. And we feel that Casey also has, he's, uh, he's played, uh, he's a transfer, so he's played college season before, and he's also in a position to compete. Uh, but right now we're looking at Colt and Oshkon as uh, the two guys battling out for the first spot. Well, two young keepers certainly can use a veteran defense in front of them, and that is the, the one place where you do bring back quite a bit of, of veteran presence on the defense. Who do you see uh, playing at that end of the field this year, and how can they help in the development of a young keeper? I think we have a good veteran group. I mean, starting from the right side, we have uh, a fifth-year senior, Joe O'Connor, 
that we've converted to an outside defender right back, and he's done a very good job this non-traditional season in preparation. Uh, came in very fit and focused. Uh, you know, Juan Valladolid and uh, Jose Diaz have been two guys that, that got most of the starts last season at the center back position. Have a good understanding of each other, uh, what our, our needs are as a team. Uh, I think they're very good technically on the ball, and their 1v1 defending is very good. Uh, with that said, we also have Hayden and Leslie that, that we converted into a center back last year, and along with being very good and very athletic defensively, uh, scored some very important goals for us on um, restarts. It's very dangerous higher in the field. And then we have uh, Ben Sperber that started at left back for us that is now working his way back uh, into the, his position. And uh, and we have Eric Gonzalez that we got that that actually was uh, uh, in the senior year we had some reserve games with the Chivas USA uh, full team and reserves. So uh, also with some youth national team experience prior to that. So he's a guy that can come in as a freshman really take a hold of that left uh, defender position. So uh, pretty much all veterans uh, outside of Eric Gonzalez competing for the left back position. And how does that benefit uh, a young goalkeeper having that kind of a wall in front of them? Well, anytime you have uh, guys that, you know, as a young keeper, you're confident with and know that they've had a lot of, of collegiate games under their belt. As a team, I don't think we did a great, good enough job defensively. We scored a lot of goals last year, but we also gave up uh, a few too many. So our goal is just getting uh, five to eight shutouts on the year and keeping that goals against average down. So we know we have some work cut out for us. Let's move up to the midfield. Who do you see battling for playing time there? We have uh, a great deal of midfielders. I mean, we got Aaron Long, Humberto Santiago, um, Juan Mendoza, uh, Jonathan Tovar, um, Julio Reyes are competing for that attacking mid position. Uh, quite a few holding mids as well. I mean, I, to be honest, this is the deepest we've ever been. So I couldn't tell you specifically, but I do know that some of the veterans like Aaron Long and are kind of the mainstays of, of, the, of the midfield that could contribute and made impact in the conference last season. It was a rare smile out of you when you started talking about the midfielders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, you it's, think that's we're good? a very deep group in the attacking positions. And so I think if we can get everyone competing on a daily basis, it's gonna, we're going to see some special things this year on the field. Well, speaking of seeing things special on the field, Cesar Diaz Bizarro last year had a pretty special season for the Highlanders, leading the team with nine goals. Ended up uh, first team all conference, ended up with an offensive player of the year nod in the Big West, now playing professionally. How do, who do you see replacing his scoring? Do you have one or two people that might be able to jump up and fill that role, or is it going to be a little more by committee this well, year? Well, I think, uh, you know, if you look at our forward line, not, not necessarily the center forwards, but also the wide forwards that we play with, uh, all of them have the ability to score goals. I think um, you know guys like uh, Ivan Garcia and Richie Osborne and uh, some of the other wingers scored quite a few goals as well in intricate games and very important games, times of the year. Uh, Caesar obviously is a guy that was an impact player for us that we that led the team and did get a lot of goals, uh, and we're happy for where he's at now. He's earned every every bit of it, of his success. But we have guys like Jimmy uh, Martinez that you know was a transfer from RCC. And he broke the school record, I think the state record for scoring at RCC. And it hasn't really gone off uh, the mark uh, in the fall seasons, but this last spring was very, very good. Ruben Valencia uh, is a very good goal scorer anywhere around the box. He's, he's very uh, sharp. Uh, Ulysses Mosqueda, which is a, a young freshman last year that got some good experience that we feel can, can score goals and is very dynamic in his runs. And then uh, we got a transfer from Rio Hondo. Uh, Andy Contreras, that also has, uh, was a leading goal scorer for Rio Hondos Junior College, and uh, very, very sharp around the box. So between those guys, we're going to be having them compete and, and sprinkling them in some of our scrimmage games to see who would be our top three guys that we'll be having a rotation with in that position. Well, the real season starts here in, uh, in about a week. What can you tell us about the pre-conference portion of the schedule? Obviously, you want to pick up as many wins as possible in that portion of your schedule, but how do you hope, uh, what do you hope your team gains from that heading into Big West play? Well, I think it's important that we, as a team, understand that every single game, whether it's your first game of the season, you know, or going into a conference uh, a tournament, they all mean so much, especially when you're dealing with RPI and you're dealing with a situation scenario where we were literally the last team off the board for the NCAA tournament. And possibly looking back, maybe some of the draws and some of the early losses that we had could have been uh, got us over the hump and getting us into the tournament. So because we've experienced that, 
uh, we know that our approach to the pre-conference games it has to be the same as it would be going into conference. Every single result counts. Uh, not taking anyone lightly and, and, and focusing on each individual game. Uh, it's nice because we were able to schedule six out-of-region opponents. Because the West Coast only got five teams in the NCAA tournament last year, which is, I think, the least amount in the history of, the, of Division One soccer, we know that uh, the committee and uh, people around the country are looking at, at West team as West Coast teams playing out of region opponents. So we did a good job of getting different out of region opponents from different conferences to hopefully uh, get some results against them. And if they do well in their conferences, that will also increase our ability to get into the NCAA tournament. Well, then we move into conference. The Big West has had some changes pretty much across the board, specifically to men's soccer, though. That means the addition of Sacramento State this year. Uh, that's the lone sport that they're competing in in the Big West Conference. But it also means that we've divided the conference into two uh, four-team divisions, a northern and a southern division. We're down in the southern division. How do you think that breaking up of the, of the conference will impact things uh, this year, and what does the addition of Sacramento State do to the conference? Well, it changes the dynamic a bit of, uh, you know, with the northern teams, you know, San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara now. Uh, we're not doing home and away, um, so with all those teams, so now they're coming down, uh, it's their turn to come down to Riverside. So opening weekend, we have both of those teams at home, which is nice. Uh, and then we go up and play Sac State and Davis. So I think that's nice because you, you're really only playing those teams once and then we're really kind of keeping a, a Southern pride, you know, the best team in the Southern section. And, and hopefully that will uh, increase the competition of the conference. Uh, the addition of Sac State is also very positive because they've been strong the last few years. And, made that civil tournament the um, uh, last couple of years. So uh, we're excited. Uh, it, it will change the dynamic, though, and, and I think this year is a, is a good setup for us, having two home games right off the bat with two of the stronger teams in the conference. Well, UC Irvine and UC Santa Barbara were the top clubs in the conference uh, a year ago. Are they still the teams to beat, and how do you see the conference shaking out this year? Irvine is in the south. UC Santa Barbara is in the north. And it's two teams from each division advancing to the conference playoffs. So you could conceivably be the third best team overall in the conference, yet not make yeah, that conference yeah. tournament. Yeah, initially we were trying to have a six-team tournament. I don't know if that would be in the near future. It looks like that might be in the, in, in the near future of us doing that and having a buy for the first two teams. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it makes it uh, that much more important to win, to get into the top two spots in, in, your, in your division. Um, yeah, you know, Santa Barbara and Irvine, they've earned the right to be teams that uh, people are looking at on a consistent basis to, to be in the top slots. Um, to be honest with you, uh, just coming from last year and how strong our conference is, it could be, I mean, if there's any team in the conference are able to win the conference, I believe. I, mean, uh, I think last year not everyone was expecting us to come out the way we did, and I'm sure there's going to be other teams that are maybe uh, voted on in a preseason coaches poll to be in a low end of of uh, the gammon that will surprise some teams and maybe get in the top two. Uh, I don't see, I think our conference is so strong now that at any given point anyone could beat any opponent on any given day, which is a beautiful thing. Well, if it's going to be the Highlanders at the end of the day uh, in that top four um, competing in the conference tournament as well as competing for a possible NCAA tournament berth, what are the things that are going to have to have gone right throughout the course of the season to make that a reality? Well, we're definitely going to need to have success prior to going to conference. And then I think getting a good start in the conference play. Um, staying focused, staying healthy, and sticking to our game plan and the overall goals of our team tactically and, and also just mentally. Um, and then obviously getting ourselves into a position where we're competing for a conference championship and being one of those top four teams. Uh, we're confident that we can get there. Uh, we have a very confident and, and now experienced group that um, we, that's our goal is to win a conference championship and, and we know that we were very close last season and we know we have the talent, the depth and the environment, training environment to get there this season. Thanks so much for your time coach. Good luck this weekend up in New York and throughout the 2012 season. Thank you very much.